There it goes in the bottom of the 10. Jim Edmonds. Trust me, the ball is gone. The ball not pictured. All you need to know is Jim Edmonds hit one off of Paul Spalgeri, and it's over. The Angels win 5 4 and 10. Pat Henkin and Mark Langston in a pitcher's duel. They. Langford, he got it. This off Ramon Martinez. Solo shot. Only his second game since coming off the DL. Cards up 1 0. Same score, top of the sixth. Going for the double steal of the cards. No play at second, but here comes Dimitri Young and his 235 pounds at the plate. Mike Piazza holds on to Greg Gagne's throw. Bottom of the sixth. Piazza now at the plate. Base hit right center. Brett Butler scores to tie the game at one. We go to the bottom of the eighth. One out and base is loaded. Raul Mondesi, base hit left side off Mark Pitkaisic. Greg Gagne scores the game winning run. Your final score, as Brett Butler enjoys watching this, is a two to one final. Ray Langford was two for four with a home. Keith Oberman, as the 12 and four Orioles were playing the White Sox in the Lyle Mouton fan club, might be up and running. It's a 2-1 game, and here the White Sox explode in the fifth. Ron Karkovice is single to left. Sox take an 8-2 lead. But look out, because Eric Davis with a grand slam off Jamie Navarro in the seventh to tie the game at nine apiece. Navarro gave up nine runs in seven innings. You think he knew this one was gone? I'm the man. He's the man. Everybody knew he was the man. Top of the tenth. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. Albert Bell facing Armando Benitez. Moves the runners over. Fundamental baseball. Good job. After an intentional walk, loads him up. Lyle Mouton again. Where's his fan club? Mouton with a fly to left. Tony Phillips tagging up at third. The always scintillating sacrifice fly. No play at the plate. Phillips is safe, and the White Sox turn this one into a thriller as they win 11 9 in 10 innings. The Sox blow a seven run lead, but come back to win it. Their third straight win. Damian Easley with a sinking liner to left. Have no fear. Rusty Greer is here. Gorgeous diving catch. Darren Oliver was brilliant all game long. Melvin Nieves. Smoke. More from Oliver. Travis. Oh, forget about it, Travis Fryman. Omar Oliveris just as effective as Benji Gill swings and misses. Top of the ninth. Rangers up 1-0. John Wetland in to save the day. Damian Easley fly to right. Mark Sagmon. Oh, he dropped it. Easley goes to second on the error, and that would prove to be costly because two batters later, with two down, it's Tony Clark. Base hit up the middle. Easley scores. We're tied at one, and Darren Oliver just watched his win slip away. Bottom of the ninth, tied at one. Two men on. Pinch hitter Mike Sims facing Dan Maselli. That is a blooper. That is not only a blooper, but it ends the game. Good night, game over. Drive home safely. Rodriguez scoring. Rangers win two to one. John Wetland blew. One nothing Marlins in the second. Jeff Reed at the plate with two men on. Slaps the Kevin Brown pitch to left for the single. Andres Big Cat Galarraga scores. We're tied at one. Still tied in the third. Gary Sheffield sends it high and deep. And aloha means goodbye off Jamie Wright. 440 feet. His third of the season. Marlins up 2-1. Tied at two in the sixth. Men on first and second for the Rockies. Walt Weiss taking Brown deep and off the wall and right. Vinny Castilla scores. Jeff Reed scores. Weiss is in with a triple. The Rockies go on to win it by a 7-3 count. If you're wondering about Larry Walker. It's 10-7 in the bottom of the fifth when A-Rod hits one deep to right. Gone, right? Well, they roll it a double. You gotta be kidding me, A-Rod says. Let's, oh, oh, what? Scores Let's and check the replay. The it goes off the railing and hits Jeffrey Mayer's Seattle pen pal. But at least you can see the ball there. You can see the ball. You can see the ball here. Forget about that. That goes in the third deck. Ken Griffey Jr. unloads. It's only worth one run, though. Brings the Mariners within 11 to 10. It's 12 to 10 in the ninth. One on, one out. Hippolito Pichardo gets Edgar to ground into the, in it, the game ending. Double play. Kansas City wins. The war of attrition, 12 to 10. Kansas City avoids first for Barry Bonds off of Tom Glavin. And the wind blows it towards the left field line. Ryan Cresco dives, can't get it, hits his head into the wall. He's slightly dazed and confused. He's got to go get the ball because everyone else is running, including Barry Bonds, who coasts in stand-up for an inside-the-park home run. The Giants take a 3-0 lead. Same score in the seventh, and Klesko makes up for his lack of defense by busting out the whoop and stick. His fifth home run in the air, and the Braves score three in the seventh to turn the game.
dropped. Bottom of the ninth, Alan Embry in relief. Bill Miller slaps it to right. Dante Powell, come on down. Here's the throw. Here's the throw. Giants win four to three. It's the fifth time they've won in their last at bat this season. Exciting baseball and commercial stick. Bonds is inside the Parker was the out for Brad Osmus in the fifth. Astros down five four and not anymore. Over the head of Greg Vaughn. That's a double. Both runners score. Astros take a six to five lead. Padres would tie it up in the sixth. Runners on first and third. Jeff Bagwell with the bomb. In the land of the palm trees, his fifth home run of the season. And the Astros go on to win it 11-7. Houston pounding out a season-high 18 hits. To me, Beverly D'Angelo. Think that disguise is going to fool us out? Forget about it. The same could be said about Ben McDonald's control. He hits Cecil Fielder and Jorge Posada and then almost hits Tim Raines and then comes even closer to Derek Jeter. Kenny Rogers was slightly more creative. Watch his hand go to his mouth. That's a balk. A balk in my home. Where my and children come and play with play their toys. Bottom of the six, Yankees lead 6-5. Bases loaded. Tino Martinez smacks a double off the right center field wall. That clears the bases. Yanks go up 9-5. And the Yankees go on to win 10-5. It's the Yankees' second straight 10-run game. They've two lead, and Tim Naring certainly did his part in the field to keep that lead. Robbing his counterpart at third. Matt Williams, nice play at first. Now Kevin Mitchell sends one Naring's way. Great diving stop, fields, fires, throws, and gets him. Jack McDowell in his first relief appearance coming out of the pens for the Indians was Hoods. Troy O'Leary looking. This is in the seventh inning. Next batter, Will Cordero, swinging. Next batter, Bill Hasselman, grounding to second base. Caps off four scoreless innings for Blackjack. Red Sox with the leading 5-4, bottom of the seventh. Base is juiced for the Indians. This time, Naring decides not to field it. Bad move, goes over the bag. Oh. Indians tie the game at five off that Williams grounder. And then Vaughn Eshelman, two batters later, on Cork's wild pitch. Indians go up 6-5 and go on to win 11-7. You can't blame Eshelman for being a little rocky. Why? Because he every time the bottom of the fifth, David Sikhi on third, and Rodriguez brings him home with a double. 4 to 3 Expo. Same score on the eighth. Tying run on first two outs for Kevin Ory. Hits one deep to right center. Rondell White on his invisible horse makes a great catch to preserve the lead. Top of the ninth. Lee Smith on for the save. Runners on first and second, and Mark Grace hits the comebacker. Smith cat like. Throws him out. Expos win 4 to 3, and uh oh. The Cubs are on a losing streak again. They've lost two straight after winning two straight after a baseball fan and legislature dollars. Al Martin taps one of Mickey Morandini at second. Calvin Maduro can't handle the throw. Tony Womack scores from second, one nothing Pirates. Pirates now trail two to one in the bottom of the seventh. Jason Kendall, fundamental baseball, gets Kevin Elster over to third. Less than two outs. Next batter, Jose Guillen, pops him up. Rico Bronia, nice over the th shoulder catch. Elster coming home, the tag, he's safe. Game tied at two, where we find the bottom of the eighth. Runners on first and second, Mark Johnson off of Eric Plantenberg, scoring Jermaine Allensworth. The Pirates battle back for the three to two win. Johnson only one. The winning record, he goes against Mark Loretta and paints the outside corner. Bottom of the first school is game, Brian Giles been battling with Kevin Mitchell for playing time. Mitch hasn't been hitting well. Giles is rocking. Off Cal Eldred, a dead center tater over a leaping Chuck Carr. Giles' throw to the ear gives Cleveland and Nagy a 2-0 lead. 3-0 in the fifth. Matt Williams, but a diving stop by Jeff Cirillo. Cirillo went hitless in the day, but made great defensive effort to make it still 3-0. By the seventh, it was 40. Look at Mark Newfield just reach out and touch Nagy. Into the right field corner. After Ramirez bobbles it, Jaha will come all the way around and make it a one-run game. Stay that way to the ninth. Omar Vizquel, it's his birthday. He's aboard, and Tony Fernandez lets him take the cake walk home. Fernandez, first home run of the year. Indians build a 6-3 lead, then hand it over to Jose Mesa. Used to be known for a gas. Now he goes off-speed, bends one on Loretta. He pops it up to Fernandez. And on Barbara Streisand's 55th birthday, the Indians notch a win that knocks the Brewers to their fifth straight loss. They now have a losing record, a good start. Travis Fryman gives Justin Thompson a lead. Roger Pavlik set a league record by walking the first four he faced last time out. He didn't walk anybody today, but he gave up that gopher ball. Then Thompson, the native Texan, is quick on his feet to rob 
Rusty Greer, we go to the seventh. Raul Casanova, did he go on Pavlik? He didn't think so. Buddy Bell certainly thought Dale Ford's strike call was a little late. Whatever Buddy said got him kicked out. Rangers trailing, and then it's all been Pudge Rodriguez in this series. Mike Sims puts himself in scoring position and in an embarrassing spot when he stumbles to a double. Then they walk the bases loaded. Mike Myers facing Billy Ripken. He's on to pinch hit for Warren Newsom when they brought the lefty in and Ripken with a ringing single, and then Pudge. He had the game-winning run last night, hit a home run as well, and this time he knocks in Mike Devereaux and Lee Stevens. The Rangers come from behind and win it and hold on after that seventh. Right, not your traditional leadoff man, but can he hit? Brady Anderson going back. He knows this park well. Gets the wall. Remember, he's playing with a cracked rib. He's holding it there, but Brady stuck with it later in the show. We'll show you how weightlifting may have helped him there. Jim Corsi, the Boston native, has just been awful in this return to his hometown. Chris Hoyle's third home run of the year ties the game at one with a solo shot in the eighth. To the ninth, two aboard, nobody out. Cal Ripken on, which the lead and two run lead runs aboard, and instead, Garcia Parra starts an easy 643 double play. To the 10. Mo Vaughn has hit nine home runs at Camden Yards in its short history. On the roads, gives him to the warning track, but that's it. To the 12. Garcia Parra gets into another one. He had just one hit on the night. We showed you the one that almost took out Brady Anderson. This one takes Terry Matthews out of the yard. The rookie's fourth home run of the year. Then Butch Henry, who can only pitch every third day, gets another big double play. The roller from Chris Hoyles. And John Valentin says, I don't care if he stole my job. at so, who last year threw a one-hitter at Wrigley Field, was baffling the Bucs, like South Jermaine Allensworth, on a wild pitch that should become a significant factor in this game. Three batters later, Allensworth on third. Kevin Oster at the plate. Al Martin gets caught in the rundown. But Sandberg lets Allensworth score before they get him in the out. The Pirates take a one nothing lead. Traxxas Stewart not allowed to hit. To the sixth, great breaker there on Al Martin. No hitter through six. Mark Johnson, who a night ago had the game when he hit against the Phillies, gets the first hit of the night over Sammy Sosa. He'd score in a sack fly. Pirates break a one-off tie and take a 2-1 lead. Then a groove pitch to Doug Landville off Mark Wilkins. That double will give the Cubs a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the seventh. Sosa comes in. Mel Rojas comes out of relief. Jason Kendall checked his swing. Jim Riggleman can't believe it. Kendall stays alive, and the All-Star makes it work. Into that dead ivy in left field to tie the game at three. Rojas, the chopper. Ray Sanchez, a late replacement, comes in at shortstop and throws it away. Jason Kendall gives him the lead, and the Pirates hold on to win it. But with Lucell picking and slam from the day before, tees off on Greg Swindell. Frankie Rodriguez got knocked out in the second inning, but Swindell didn't exactly pick him up. Fizio doubles in a couple of more. Three for six, three RBIs in the day. By the fifth, it's eight to one A's, and back come the Twins. Roberto Kelly off deep. Tailgater, that'll drop off the warning track. Matt Lawton makes it eight to two. Kelly had three RBIs, and then Terry Steinbach against his old battery mate. There it goes, Steinbach. First home run as a twin in his old ballpark. With two aboard, the three-run shot gives the Twins a 9-8 lead. By the ninth, they're up 11-8. Brett Main off Rick Aguilera, a solo shot in the ninth. He's still got a two-run lead. Matt Stairs, though, hits a two-run homer to tie the game. Two ninth-inning homers off Aguilera. We're all 11s in the 11th. Aguilera still in there against Jose Canseco. Wild pitch, it gets away, and in comes Tony Batista. A wild one ends that way, 12-11 A's. After getting some work in during Sunday's long...